Today we're going to do history of the atom, the worksheet history of the atom, worksheet number one. Right. Um, what experimental evidence did Thompson have for each statement? He said that electrons have a negative charge. Now if you go back to your podcast and we um, look at the podcast, one of the things that we talked about for Thompson was the CRT, the cathode ray tube. Okay, And um, he had electrons flowing down the tube. And when he would put a positive charge up here, positive charge would attract a negative charge. So the electrons would go towards the positive charge. Right? If he put a negative magnet up here, it would push these away. It would repel. Okay? So the beam in the cathode ray tube would either be attracted to a positive charge or repelled from a negative charge. So that told him that this beam of things which were generating the phosphorescent light on that phosphorescent coating, um, the beam of electrons had to be negatively charged. Now part B, this was not in the um, in the podcast, this was something you could pull out of the book. Um, Thompson found that uh, he tried different gases and um, he tried different metals. So um, in the tube there was a gas, let's go back up to this diagram up here, in this tube up here there was a gas and um, it wasn't much but there was a little bit and he could change the gas and no matter what gas he put in here he still found the same effect for these electrons and what he did was he also had a metal cathode down here and the metal cathode is the thing that's generating the electrons so he tried different types of metal and when he tried different types of metal he still got this beam of electrons going across that was always negative that he could always repel with a negative magnet or attract with a positive magnet. So based on that, he said, all the metals I tried did this, and all the gases I tried did this. So he said, it must be true for all elements, that all elements have electrons. Now about Rutherford. What did Rutherford do? Well, he came up with the concept that atoms contained a dense nucleus that was positively charged. And you're, if you remember this, this was the gold foil experiment. All right, where he fired alpha particles, which are simply helium nuclei, two protons and two electrons, and he fired them at a piece of gold foil. And he expected most of them, or all of them actually, to go straight through. But what he found was some of them would be deflected. And in fact, some of them would come right back at him. And the only way that he could think this could happen is that if you had this big atom, and right in the middle, you had a very, very dense nucleus. A nucleus that when something hit it, could actually repel it back to where it came. Or when it came close, it could deflect it to somewhere else. So <clears throat> these concepts that he had were all dependent upon a dense nucleus. Well, what does that mean about everything else? Well, the electrons are just out there. And there are a couple of electrons sitting out here. But for the most part, the vast majority of this area is all empty space. So that was why he came up with the second concept because they thought that it was just kind of one big ball. Well, it's not. It's an empty ball, is really what it is. Okay, our Bohr model of the atom, I realize the fact that this is boron, that that doesn't do anything for you, but um, boron happens to be atomic number five. And if I look at atomic number five, that means it's going to have five protons sitting in the middle. All right. It's also going to have some neutrons in here, but we're not going to worry about how many of those. But bottom line, that's your nucleus. And then out here you've got some electrons. Now it just so happens that in the first shell of those electrons, you have two electrons. And I realize you don't know why it's only two yet, and you probably didn't realize it was only two, but you'll figure that out when we get into later podcasts. And over here we have a total of three more electrons sitting out in our second energy level. And again, you wouldn't know that, that they're in these particular shells. You might have put all five in one shell. That's cool, because for the Bohr model of the atom, you wouldn't know that yet. Okay? But bottom line, you should realize that we do have a dense nucleus, which is in the middle. And the Bohr model said that we had electrons traveling in orbits around the nucleus. Okay. So, what did he liken the design of an atom to? He... Uh, he looked at our planetary system and said it's like the planets and they circle the sun or the moon circles the earth it doesn't matter but these were orbits and we will find that 
electrons really don't travel in orbits, but for purposes of understanding what's going on with those electrons for right now, that's an excellent way to understand them. And when we get to light in one of our subsequent units, this is an excellent way to understand atoms and electrons.